As you probably know, I absolutely love CSS Hero, and in this video, I just want to demonstrate some of the new updates that have been brought out over the last few weeks. Some interface updates, some new features, and a ton of really cool things. So let's just take a look at those in action right now. My name is Paul C and this is WP Touch, the channel where we create beautiful WordPress websites together. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew. Okay, so CSS Hero. If you've never seen it or you don't know what it is, it's basically a way of visually editing the CSS for your entire website. So if you're used to working with a customizer in WordPress, this gives you very similar functionality but focuses on dealing with the CSS. So with the latest updates, they've brought with them a ton of new features, updates, bug fixes, and some really cool things. And in this video, I just want to take you through some of the things that I think are worthy of taking a look at. This is a sponsored video. CSS Hero have kindly asked me to create content for them. This is in no way a review or my opinion. This is just demonstrating how these new features and updates work. So jumping over into the dashboard of my WordPress, you can see I've already got CSS Hero open. Now, if you've used this in the past, you may notice there are quite a few differences to the actual interface itself. It's had some tweaking, it's had some enhancements applied to it, and generally things to make it just operate quicker, smoother, and more intuitively, which, in my opinion, is something you can never have too much of. So let's kick things off with some of the refinements we've had to the interface. As you can see, everything looks really nice, simple and laid out. Let's go through and select an item and take a look at one of the first things that you'll notice. So let's come down and choose something on our page. Once we choose that, you can see right across the bottom, we've now got the ability to go through and refine any of the selectors that we're using. This will show us the entire stacking order of the CSS definitions that we are clicked on. So in other words, this on the right hand side is the item we've clicked on. And then we can see the hierarchy as we move back over to the left, right the way down to the body HTML element. So if you need to refine something, if you kind of click on something, you think actually I want the container for that, or I want to jump back to the previous selector, you can do that simply by using this at the bottom, which means refining things is considerably quicker and considerably easier. Now, speaking of making the interface easier, if we take a look at the top, you'll see we now have some additional tools and options. So making selections in context a lot easier. So you can see whenever we select something, so let's just take this little label, for example, you can see it tells us exactly which selector we're looking at, the number of times this appears on the actual page we're editing, the status, whether it's normal or hover status, and we've also got a context refiner. So you can see we can come in and choose normal, we can choose only on this template, only on this page, or only this element. So we can refine exactly what we want to do. So we might want to make changes. We don't want to make those globally. We just want to apply those to a particular page, the one that we're working on. Or we can do that by saying only on this page. So it just makes the whole process of refining your selections and the edits that you make much easier. And like I say, all inside the editor itself. So very quick and easy to work with. Now, when you're working on a page or a site and you make an edit, you can very quickly and easily lose where you are within those edits. So you can't necessarily tell what you've edited, what you haven't. Well, with the updates, we can now see that just simply by rolling over the mouse. So if we take our mouse over at Elements, you can see we get the little selector pop-up underneath tells us what we've moused over. You can see we can go over any of these different items and it'll pop up and tell us the selector and give us some additional information. But one thing that gives us now is when we go over something we have edited, we'll now get the selector will highlight blue and it tells us we've edited this. So we can immediately see we've edited something compared to something that's not edited. So for example, we go over the little avatar image, no edits have been made to that. Whereas if we go over different elements that have been edited, you can see it immediately pops up and tells us. So a very quick visual way of seeing exactly what sections you've edited throughout your site. Now on top of that, some additional functionality. If we take our mouse over where it says edited, give it a click, you can see it says all devices. So we can find out if we've made changes to just tablets, desktops, all devices and so on. So if we make selective alterations through CSS Hero to specific devices, we can then click to see what's edited and what device they've been edited on. So again, one of those real time savers when it comes to working with the editor itself, very quick, very easy and just incredibly intuitive. Now they haven't stopped there with these great enhancements to the interface. Let's go through and make an edit. So let's come through to this little tag now for the taxonomy for this particular post. We're gonna click on it, we'll make some changes to it. So let's come over and do something really simple like a background color change. We'll set that to be red, for example. Okay, so once we've done that, now click away from it, you can see we've made our change. Now when we go over and click on anything we've edited, so for example, this author section, 
You see, what happens is it automatically comes up at the top, highlights in blue that properties have been changed. In this example, only one property has been changed. But it'll automatically open up and display the things that we've changed about it. So you can immediately see what changes you made to a particular section or particular CSS selector as soon as you click on it. So all these little tweaks and enhancements makes the process of seeing what you've done what's been edited and how to specify exactly what gets edited and choose the right things. Just a painless process. Just really, really cool, well thought out, simple changes that make the whole process of working with CSS Hero just a lot nicer. Now, we pretty much always had the ability to be able to switch between the select mode where we can go through and select the different definitions and make edits and the actual navigate mode, which allows us to jump to different pages or view the page in a very clean way of doing things. So they've updated the way that happens now, and it just is a lot easier to work with. You can see we've got select and navigate. All we need to do is click on navigate to get rid of the left hand selection options where we can go through and make the edits. We now get a cleaner interface. The ability to select the different things on our page is now disabled by default, and we can go through and we can navigate through other pages and make changes and carry on working. When we're ready to go back to the select mode, we can simply click on select. It switches back all seamlessly and a really nice way of working. Just this makes it a lot easier than the way it used to, which was kind of just a little bit not quite so obvious as it is now. So I think, again, it's one of those little enhancements that just makes things just considerably easier to work with. Now, if you want to review the edits that you've made and see exactly what's happened, we now have a new project overview panel. So we come up to the top right hand side and we come to the project section. We're going to come down to project overview. Click on there and that now shows us a panel on the right hand side which allows us to click and open every single edit we've made and see exactly what's been done. So you can see the selector, all the CSS definition alterations we've made in there. We can go through and we can just see exactly what's been done. We can also create new folders and put all this information into those folders. If you want to organize things a little better, you can do that very easily. So you can click to add a new folder, give it a description if you want to, and then you can drop in the different elements straight into there, and you can then organize things through there. So you may want to put things to page edits. You may want to have things then for font text edits. However you want to do it, this just allows you to structure and organize that information in a very simple, logical fashion. So again, a really cool thing, especially if you're working with multiple designers and you want to work between each other and you want to keep those edits really simple, clean, and see who's done what, when, and what's been done itself. So a really cool organizational tool there for the project overview section. Now, on top of the ability to see what's been edited, we can now use a thing called checkpoints. Now, checkpoints is a great way of being able to test out different designs and save those edits, and then you can call those back up. So let's take a look at that in action. We've got the checkpoint section at the top, and you can see we've got save checkpoint as and open checkpoint panel. So let's just save this one, and we'll say, we'll call this red. We'll hit save on there. Once that's been done, you can see it automatically opens up the panel, shows us the date, the time, and all the information about this particular checkpoint. So let's come in now and let's make some changes to these and let's set those back to a different color. So let's go through and we'll set those to orange. And we'll just say we're happy with that and we'll save another checkpoint in there. So we'll say save checkpoint as, and we'll call this one orange. And we'll click, oh, let's spell that correctly, orange, and click on save. So we can see now we have two different variations of this particular design. If I click on red, it'll then load that back in with all the edits for the red style that we've created. And if we want to go back to the orange, we can click on there and go back to orange. So again, this is one of those things that's a great way of to test different designs, especially if you're working with a client, you think, well, look, we've got this option, we've got this option, which do you think is the better way of doing it? They can then come back with their feedback, and then you know you've got all those pieces of information saved as part of the CSS file, and you can just then load in and carry on working with the one that you want. So really, really cool, really simple, and again, just one of those things that makes my life considerably easier. Now, there are times when you're building a website that you're going to have different things or different aspects of the site only being available to either logged in or logged out users. And having the ability to style those based upon whether you're logged in or logged out is something that's really useful. So what you can do now is you can come up and you've got the option for tools and you can see we've got view as unlogged. In other words, if you're not signed in, you can view the site and then you can make edits to how that particular user would see it. So really cool if you are, like you say, you've got different sections of the site showing up to logged in and logged out users, you can now switch back and forth between those two different versions and make edits to either one. Really cool. Speaking of logged in and logged out users, we can now go through and style the login page. So if I click on this, you'll see that will now take us through and load in the login page, which we can now go through and start setting up the styling to make sure that's consistent to the way we want it to appear 
throughout our entire site. So again, really simple way to do things, but nice to see it's integrated into CSS Hero directly into the core editor. So we now have the ability to undo and redo a lot easier than we used to. So let's just say, for example, we come in and choose the little tags we've got there. We'll change the typography on there and we'll set it to a different font. So we'll do something like Anonymous Pro. Let that load in. We now have two ways of working. We can use the little undo and redo options at the top of the screen, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts to undo and redo. So Control Z will undo and Control X will redo. So you can see very quick and easy to do those alterations, test something out, undo it, redo it, whatever you want to do, whichever way is the easiest for you. Now there's one more key feature that I want to show you, and that's now the fact that we have the animation editor built in to CSS Hero. So we can animate pretty much any aspect of our page. We can select an item, we can then apply some animation to it. So let's do just that. Let's come down to the bottom of the page and let's come down and choose our footer. So we'll come in and grab that. We use the selector at the bottom to make sure we've got the wrap footer. So we've got the right selector enabled. Then we come up, we've got the new animation tab. So we can click on there. We can use the preview window to animate our page to see exactly what's going on. And then underneath that, we can go through and choose exactly what effect we want. So you can say on reveal effect. So we lift this up. You can see we can just move around the page. Get exactly where we want so we can see it. And then we can choose whatever we want from the list of reveal effects. So let's come through and let's just choose something like... Let's go for slide right. You can see that opens up then a pile of other options that allow us to fine tune and tweak exactly what this looks like. So we can choose the easing if we want to. So we'll say ease in and ease out. We can set an offset and a delay. We can set a duration and whether this happens once or whether it continues to loop. And you can see it says animated ELS. In other words, what element is going to be animated. As you can see, we selected the wrap footer. And in there, you can see we've got that div being selected and tagged. So we can just use this to adjust our positioning. And as we scroll down, we'll see the effect actually come into play. So there's our animation zooming across the screen. So we can easily come in, check any of the effects that we want are actually being displayed correctly by using this little preview window. Once we're happy with that, we can just hit on Save and Publish. And if we then jump over to our test page, We'll quickly refresh that page to make sure that we've got a fresh copy in there. We'll scroll down the page and we'll see that there's our footer animates into the right hand side. So exactly what we set it up to do is all being done. And that pretty much covers the key things that I wanted to demonstrate in the last two versions of CSS Hero. Hopefully what they've demonstrated is that these new tweaks and enhancements to both the interface and the functions and tools we have available make editing and styling your entire page, site, whatever you want to do inside WordPress much easier, much quicker and a lot more intuitive. Now, if you don't use CSS Hero and you think this is something you'd like to take a look at in a lot more detail, there's links in the description below that will take you through. And at the moment, there are fantastic savings across all the different plans, whether that's an individual site, multi-site, or pretty much unlimited sites. So you can save yourself a ton of cash by using those links and you get access to all these great tools and anything that comes out in the future. So it's a great piece of software and a great way of being able to tweak and edit your WordPress websites in a visual fashion. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but let me know in the comments section below why you didn't enjoy the video. As always, if you've got any comments or questions on CSS Hero, please pop those in the comments section below. I'll try and answer everything that I can, and it's a great way of getting a conversation started so we can discuss what you think of this plugin. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.